This is Johnny Wrestling, or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're the ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. So I want you to listen to the No Holds Barred Network. Enough is enough Now we have it working. Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> Sorry, I have it all these technical issues. But anyway, your host is always <laughs> the EVP of Giggles, the queen of the indies. I'm so sorry about that. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like annoyed at me now. <laughs> Episode 12. Oh, no, oh, no, no. It's not you. It's everyone. I'm annoyed at everyone. And yeah, it is episode 12. How how could you let 12 whole episodes go by without having me on? That's that's another mark against you. Ugh. But it's it is your honor to have me it on is. this show. It is. <laughs> it is my honor. So welcome, <laughs> NXZN. What is going on? So much and yet so little. So much and so little. <laughs> uh it is a new year and it's time to remind a few people of who I am and the list is growing and growing. Uh, speaking of lists, <laughs> um, I heard you had a list of husbands. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but uh, bigamy is not legal in the state of wherever it is you're from. <laughs> well, we're just gonna keep it in my mind then. All right, we're just gonna we're just gonna leave it where it is. <laughs> I had to. Sorry. But... <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So. But um, yeah. So so you ready for the for this interview? I know I know you got a lot to say. I don't know. I think you're. I don't know. A little pissed off. I mean, I I don't know. Yeah, I'm not normally a violent person. Unfortunately, you people uh, leave me no choice. Oof, oof. All right. So so let's get into the four one one of all of this. Okay. All right. Let's do it. So so we need to, we need to know what does N X Z N mean. Oh, really? Right off the bat? Right oh, off the you bat. are intrusive. <laughs> okay. Um, let me just start by saying, um, you know what? Let me ask you a question, uh, Tiffany, oh, is it? Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. Do you care or are you just curious? I care. I legit care. You care. Okay. I care. So because you care, I want to tell you, it's just that. It's not for uh, everybody to know just yet. So uh, I'll do you a favor. Um, if we have time before the end of the interview, uh, just remind me and I'll let you know what NXN is. Oh, okay. All right. Well, good things come to those who wait, right? That's so, right. So you have a show coming up on February 22nd. Right. That's actually yes. I have I have the poster here. I'm gonna I'm gonna flash it for you guys. All right. So at the promotion IWA, which I have been gone to many of these shows before, they're great shows. So um, you know, we want to know, like, uh, you know, what's your problem with Frank here? My problem, my problem is not with just Frank. My problem is with this whole system. You know, like ever since I joined. The independent wrestling scene i'm coming to see a lot of the same and um it's horrible this uh this really just eats me alive how how much injustice these people get away with and i aim to extinguish this fire before it spreads so I, i've kind of taken on this this personal like journey of uh just saying how I feel and making it known that I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not going to stand for these injustices. And I'm going to take Frank down for, for everything that he's done to me personally. Um, and, and I know that 
it's a mystery because you had to ask. Um, but at the last show, at Crossing the Line, in the Battle Royal, I wasn't eliminated before he told them to tell everybody that I was. And I know why he did that, too. I know why he told everybody I was eliminated, because I didn't want to be in the match. And he knew I didn't want to be in the match. I, like, I made it very clear to him. I was very... I was a little heartbroken when he changed it because I was ready for a gauntlet match. I was. I could beat people individually in a row. But you put them in a battle royal, and that changes everything. Anyway, so he knew I didn't want to be in the match. But I said, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it my way. And I told him my plan was to just walk out of the ring when I felt like it. And I said, I could win this match if I do that. So he didn't say anything after I said that. When I went to the ring and I did my thing, I was dominant. And I know, and I know you and everybody else saw that I was dominant in that match. And when I decided it was time for me to go, I took my walk. And Frank saw that, and he saw my feet hit the floor. He saw me go under the bottom rope, and he called for it anyway. Because he knew that if I did that, I would win the match. So he was being unfair to me. Even though it's in the rules that you have to go over the top rope. So that's just another in a long line of uh, injustices, let's say. So this is, a, this is a street match, right? This is a street fight. That's right. So what are, what are we entailed with this? Like, is, is so, what kind of weapons? Like, what is, what is going on? You see, you hit the nail right on the head there. It's, it's going to be a match, and there's going to be weapons. And that's so that Frank has a chance. Like, I don't know if you get this. Frank is a promoter. I'm a wrestler. So I have the, uh, the advantage being that I am so incredibly uh, athletically gifted and technically sound the way I am. So Frank knew that he couldn't beat me one-on-one -on -one if it was just a singles match. So he made it a street fight where now he has something of an advantage. Like he, uh, uh, he could possibly potentially crunch out a win if he hits me with everything he's got. But I don't think that he can because he's way past his prime. Like, that's just not possible. Oh, do we, do we get a peek of any weapons that might possibly be in this, this match? Um, I've, I've got a steel chair sitting around. Um, basically, uh, anything that I see under the ring, around the ring, uh, in the uh, arena that day, uh, I'll hit Frank with. Oh, so I better uh, hold my purse then, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, hold it nice and tight. <laughs> oh God. Um. So I know, like, you publicly denounced Hank Flanagan's help. Why? Oh, so we're talking about Hank Flanagan, and I knew I knew that we would because when I said his name and I knew I was coming on this show, I knew that you would uh, talk to me about Hank Flanagan because he's like, what, number three on your, your little list, huh? He's number two. Oh, even better. I'm talking about number two. So speaking on the help of good Hank Flanagan, um, I have no problems with Hank Flanagan. I mean, I think he's a piece of shit, but that's what I love about him. Um, excuse my language. But no, you're good. I don't have any problem with him, um, except I, I, I developed one. I found one. The problem that I have with him is that I'm not trying to make this a thing. Like, I don't want it. I didn't want him to hop on the bandwagon and take, like, credit for something that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, honestly, I don't care that he has a problem with Frank. I get it. You know, we should all have a problem with Frank at the end of the day. So, I want him to have his fight with Frank, just not on the same day that I have my fight with Frank. You know what I'm saying? Mm, okay. Okay, maybe we'll see some more in the future. Do you, do you think he's going to, like, interfere in this match by any chance, or...? I mean, I really hope not. I don't need his help. And I honestly, I honestly think that I can take down Frank by myself. Like, I don't... It, it, it's going to be to the point where I really don't need to use any weapons. Like, they're there for Frank's comfort, not mine. Oh, all right. You're uh, very confident. Why, why are you so confident with this? Um, well, if you must know, um, I know Frank is, like, really, like, prideful and headstrong. So uh, I believe that he's coming to this match alone. Um, but he did want 
he did want to have his favorite wrestler, the world's widest man, that brick house Astro Morales in his corner. And he can't because Astro is still hurt. Astro is injured right now. And it's not to say that I'm happy Astro's not going to be there, but I think that that being his boy, that being his favorite wrestler, I think he would have tried something. I think he would have tried to um, to pull something, some dirty tricks, some underhanded tricks, um, and he might have tried to interfere in that match. So I'm confident because I know it's just going to be me versus Frank, mm-hmm. and that's going to be in my ring, in my environment. So, and and also, mm-hmm. I'll be bringing my secret weapon. Oh, what is the secret weapon? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a secret. <laughs> I would. Gotta ask. Gotta try, right? Gotta try. Well, if all the weapons are allowed, then my secret weapon should be fine, right? Ooh, okay. All right. So you brought up Astro Morales. You know, does he scare you, know, you? Does he scare you at all? I'm offended that you would even ask me that. <laughs> um, Astro is, he is about as big as a house, but he's also like about as charismatic as well. So, like, to answer your question, Astro doesn't frighten me. Uh, if he tries me, I got his number. That's that's all I'm going to say about it. Like, if he tries to get involved in this match in any way, like, I think it's a knee injury that he has right now. So, yeah. if he tries to get involved, I've got his number. So, that's all I'll say about that. Um... Other than that, I really had no problem with Astro. Other than that, he's Frank's favorite guy, basically. Mm-hmm. If he's gonna if he's gonna take sides in this little war that we're having with uh, with Frank and I, then he, I think he chose the wrong side. Um. So we have Anthony St. James in the chat. He said, "How do you spell his name?" His name? <laughs> My your, name? Your name? How do you spell it? Well, you know, I I never thought Anthony St. James was that smart, but this just proves it. Um, it's on the poster. It's on uh, my Facebook. It's on, it's on the marquee. Honestly, like you can't miss it. It is N X Z N. That's how you spell it. That's how it's pronounced. Like, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Um. Oh, hold on one second, because the thing just froze on me. And online. Over the past few weeks. Over the past few months, actually. I don't like how disrespectful he's gotten. Because he thinks that he can say that stuff. And then come showtime, it's all going to be buddy-buddy and we're going to work together. And that's not how it's going to be. When I see Frank, I'm going to let him know that I really mean business. At all times. But I feel like he hasn't been taking me seriously when I say he's not safe from me. So Frank is one of those guys that always likes to tell people where he's going to be. He always likes to post about where he is. So I know that he's not really a hard guy to find. But if he needs me to show him just how serious I am, I'll let it, I'll let it know. I'll let it be known that I'm, I'm ready for a street fight any day of the week, old man. So if you keep running your mouth, we don't have to wait until February. Oh, just a promise that I'm making right here and now. If you keep up the smack talk, you're going to see it real soon. You're going to see it real soon. Oh, boy. Um, so is there any other projects in your way, like, coming up? Uh, February, I think it's the first. I'll be competing in the BWF Battle Bowl tournament. I'm in, like, this tag team uh, points-based series to determine the number one contender for the BWF tag team championships which is currently held by los jefes internacional bronco and el jefe Mm -hmm. um but against against my wishes against all odds and despite my best efforts i'm tag teaming with rufus and um we haven't had a lot of success lately ever since uh they kind of paired me with him almost like they kind of like stuck me under his wing and it's not somewhere i want to be no rufus is not like a great mentor or anything Mm-hmm. And he's even worse, a bad tag team partner. Mm-hmm. So my hopes for winning this tournament really lie in my ability to whip Rufus into, sh- into some sort of shape. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to take great pride in winning the tag team titles by myself. Okay. Um, so 
what has been your most memorable moment thus far? I would have to say, hands down, my BWF debut. It still ranks uh, in my top 10 moments of all time in my entire career, but like the best moment for me of all time was when I won the Battle Royal to determine the challenger to TJ Marconi's World Heavyweight title. Now, if they would have given me uh, a week or even a month to kind of like prepare for that match instead of having it on the same night, you might actually be looking at the BWF World Heavyweight Champion right now. But of course, they're not going to do that. They're going to give uh, TJ Marconi a little bit of time to recover, if you know what I mean. And then they're going to give him some time to really like uh, uh, size me up after I won the Battle Royal. You know, like we never talked before, TJ and I. So. I didn't stand a chance in that match, honestly. But my favorite moment was challenging for the BWF World Heavyweight Championship. Oh, okay. Um, we have a fan tweet from a, a, a fan of ours named Chris. He goes, how would you describe your style in the ring? And when the time comes, who would be your dream opponent? Or where would, you, where would a dream promotion you'd like to work for? Hmm. So uh, it's hard to believe that this show has fans. Um, first of all, and secondly, uh, to answer your question, my style, uh, I used to be very technical, very submission based, but then I realized it's not really going to work. So I kind of just, I started letting my fist do the talking. I, I think I would say I'm a brawler. Um, but uh, still a little bit of technical, still a little bit of submission based wrestling in there. As for dream opponents, uh, come one, come all, honestly, but Maybe uh, maybe I'd like to face uh, Adam Cole someday. Ooh. Adam Cole, baby. Um, and a dream promotion. Uh, when you talk about dreams, I think everybody's dream is to get to the WWE. Okay. Yeah, that's my dream. Um, so this is a question I usually ask a lot of wrestlers. Um. What has been the craziest thing a fan's done to get your attention? Well, in our business, uh, I like to do this thing called we call no selling. Um, so I'm really like I'm really hard to like get a hold of. If you know me, you know that I like really just try to avoid uh, contact with people. Um, I wouldn't so much call myself antisocial as more easily annoyed, but. I remember this one fan messaged me on Instagram incessantly um, just every day and I was just not feeling that. So I blocked them. And I think that'll be like the first and only time that I did that. But I think it's really easy to get on my bad side. So don't get on his bad side. Um, Ray said in the chat, who is this guy? <laughs> who is this guy? You know what? I'm not even mad. I'm, I'm really not, honestly, because the less you know of me, the better. I'm not here to scream at the top of my lungs what my name is for everybody. Fact of the matter is, I just get really annoyed that people who have heard my name are playing stupid like they don't get it. Like, it's not hard to get. And sooner or later, they're going to realize I mean business. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, is there, do you have like a bold prediction for yourself in 2020? Yes, I do have a bold prediction for myself in 2020. Um, it has recently come to my attention that some people in wrestling are, um, what's the word? Uh, not, they're not savory characters. They're not people that people want to work with. Um, my bold prediction is that I'm going to make a few enemies this year. And that's just, <laughs> that, that goes for anything, really. I'm not... I'm not here to make friends, as as I've said. Mm -hmm. hmm. Um. So, do you think maybe you're gonna tell us what your name's gonna, what your name means, the NXVN now? Oh right, I did tell you that I was gonna tell you. Um. Yeah. Here's the thing about me. I don't have to play by your rules. I don't have to be honest about anything. And most importantly, I really didn't like that stunt that you pulled earlier, where you yanked my interview. Like you just you kind of cut it short. You know, like I you. You're, you're limiting my exposure now. You're making me look bad. I, so, you know, I used to want to tell you, but I feel like 
You're not worthy. I oh, feel like I can't tell you now. I'm not worthy. Damn. Damn. <laughs> Crap. I mean, I mean, that's just how it works, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Um, so, um, what was the biggest advice that a wrestler or has given you? Advice. Advice that a wrestler has given me? Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, there's a veteran, his name is Bobby V. Uh, he told me that, um, make everything I do count. So yeah, I feel like that was advice that I got early on in my career that really like shaped who I am. Mm -hmm. And I had the chance to go against Bobby V in IWA. And that was a good learning experience for me too. So Mm -hmm. I kind of owe a little bit of my career to that guy. Um, if you guys have any um, questions in the chat, just drop them into the chat. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is there, like, anything else, like, you want to say to, like, Frank before? I mean, we I have, we have like, a month, right? We, it's, it says the 22nd. So it's a month from today. You're going to you're gonna have this street fight. So, That's I right. mean, you clearly have been preparing for this, correct? Uh, preparing, yes. I like to stay active. Um, I'm exercising every day, but that's not for the street fight. That's just how I live my life. I'm a little bit healthier now than I ever have been in my life. Um, but I know that uh, even on my worst day, Frank couldn't get me, even if it was his best day. You know what I mean? Oof. Oof. And I, I have a question for you. I have a question okay. for you in the chat. Um, how does this show stay on the air? Um, if you can't even stay on the internet. Oh, terrible. Terrible. Horrible. I think I know what happened. I think uh, we said the name too many times and it blew a circuit. You said this has never happened before, right? It's never happened before. Unprecedented. And I think that uh, if this were a quality show, it could take something like saying the name more than once. <sighs> terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> hey, I remember your name. That's that's just how I feel about that. Oof. Um, mm. <laughs> do you have any... Um advice to any wrestlers out there that are like beginning or training um yeah i have advice get out now um no (laughs) no seriously i have some advice for those guys seriously get out now no (laughs) um it's a it's a very demanding sport uh it's a very it's very risk reward. I mean, you have to make something of yourself. Like you have to really like want this and it'll show if you really like, if you look at the people that are starting out in their career and you see that they're, they're just not giving their all to it. And then they're, they're acting like, Oh, why isn't this for me? Why isn't this working out? It's because, you know, they didn't plan to dedicate this much of themselves to this. So you got to really want it. That's, I mean, that's cliche, but I feel like it has to be said. Um, is there anybody that you've worked with before that um, you really like to work with that maybe you would like to work with them again? Well, I would not go as far as to say I liked working with this person because this working with this person was a living hell in that I didn't like waking up at night feeling like I could never beat this person. And he was basically my rival for the better part of the uh, earlier part of my career. Mm -hmm. And his name is Leo. And I haven't seen him in a few years, but I think it's for the best. I think after he beat me the last time, he went into hiding. So um, if he he gets the itch to come back, if he gets the urge to to try and, and fight me again, I'm waiting. I'm waiting nice and patiently for him. But yeah, that's that's one person who I I would really say I could do. I could I could work with him anytime. Ooh. All right. Um. So yeah. So you're preparing. You like I said for February first. So that's also BWF. Another great promotion. I've been there as well. Unfortunately, I won't be at that show. So I guess I'm gonna have to check out the replays, which I'm kind of sad about. So <laughs> no, the production value of BWF is greatly improved. Um, I think they're doing a lot of great things with the, uh, the, the production value of BWF. So mm-hmm. it's such a you're going to, I mean, watching in person has its own benefits, but if you're not there, yeah, at least check it out on YouTube, right? Yeah. They, they post a lot of videos and clips as well. So I'm kind of like sad that I'm not going to be there, but I guess you're going to have to kick some ass 
while you're That's there. Me. So go ahead. So so I don't know. Like I mean, if there's anything else, I mean, you know, if you want to say anything else to Frank, I got something else I'd like to say to Frank. Frank, you you talk about where you are every single day. You talk about where you're going, where you've been. So like you're not a hard guy to find. If you keep talking, if you keep saying my name, if you keep acting like you know better than me, I'm going to I'm going to take that as you trying to to summon me almost to 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 say my name three times and summon me to your, your freaking doorstep. But I'll go to your freaking doorstep and I'll make an example out of you if you if you think that I won't. So, just keep that in mind and uh and Play it safe, old man. That's what I have to say to you. Oof. Oof. I'm, uh, I guess I'll be coming with the first aid kit that I keep telling everybody that I'm going to be bringing the first aid kit when I go to all these shows. I have a better band-aids. idea. Why don't you dial 9-1 and keep your finger over the one? Oh, that's terrible. He's going to need help. He's going to need help walking out of there. Oh, when I'm through, <laughs> When I'm through with him, like, he has no chance. Oh, jeez. Oh jeez. Oh boy. I'm looking forward to this uh this match. So tell everybody where they can find you at. So I'm on Facebook.com slash NXN official. I'm on YouTube, search up NXN official. Um Instagram NXN official and Yeah, I think that's about it, yeah. I have all the links below except the YouTube channel, but I can add that later. But if you guys, you can go give a follow. So, so I'm going to ask again, are you going to let me know what the NXDN means? You know something? You're persistent. And there's only one thing that I have to say to that. You want to go? <laughs> oh, damn. No, no. I'm going to sit over here. I'm not going to bother anybody. <laughs> damn. So. It's better. Oh man, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Um, yeah. So don't push my buttons, okay? Oh, I'm I know, sorry. I know I'm that everybody else likes everybody you, buttons. but you haven't won me over. Oh okay? damn! Like the salt. Do I have to like bake some cookies and bring them to the next show or something? Like <laughs> you're trying to get me. You're trying to get me sick. If you feed me cookies, okay. First of all, I'm trying to keep myself in shape. <laughs> all right. Do I have to bring strawberries? So- like or something. Strawberries would be better, absolutely. Uh, but you know, if you're trying to bribe me, you know, this this it does it's not a good look for you. Like I, I get it. You're just you're trying to make up, you're trying to overcompensate for your crappy wrestling show, your quality. Uh, you're, you're, you know, and it's it's a shame because you know, I really wanna promote the show, I really wanna share this, but you know, I know that everybody's gonna be like, What happened? Why would you do that? Why would you make him look stupid like that? But you know, I just I think I need to make an example of you. I'm going to I'm going to tell everybody about this. I'm going to make it known that she made an embarrassment out of me and you're going to have to live with that for the rest of your days. Oh, the shame, the shame bell. Oof. I'm Oof. Sorry. Oh. Oof. <laughs> oh god. You pissed off the wrong guy. I'm sorry. Like, oof, I'm so sorry. So I guess, uh, I guess, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe we should bring something for the street fight to make it up that, that, that you could use in the ring or something. Like, is there something you want me to bring? Have, uh, let me think. Do you have a kendo stick? Do you have aluminum foil pans? I have aluminum foil uh, pans. Uh, I, can, I can bring some aluminum foil pans. Yeah, bring some, uh. Bring some uh, like empty juice bottles, cause I just I really want to hit them with stuff. You know what I mean? Like anything, anything that you have. Like you know, you probably have some uh, old, dirty used hairbrushes too. <laughs> what? Like wow. Well, shit. Yeah. Well, oh. Whatever. Yeah. No. I, and if I if I do anything to Frank on this show, February twenty second in Nutley, New Jersey, it's going to be as a result of what happened here today with you. Oh. I'm just. Oh my God! I'm, I'm a victim of circumstance. Honestly, this this kind of this kind of stuff always happens to me. I'm not even surprised anymore. Wow! I, I, shame on you I, for asking me what the name stands for. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I don't even I don't even know what to say anymore. Um, I know you feel like a hot dog on the Fourth of July because I am grilling you. But you totally are. So, um. But yeah, I mean, 
I guess that's it. I mean, is there anything else that you would like to say? Let I mean, the longer know? you keep the line open, the longer I'm going to to drag your name through the dirt. So <laughs> damn. Okay. So well, then I guess get yourself to cover. And and if you see Frank before I do, which is not likely, because knowing him, he's going to cross that line, and I'm gonna I'm gonna show him. I'm going to do to him what I should have done at crossing the line, and I'm going to show him the back of my hand. So, yeah, so the longer you keep this line open, the longer I'm going to tell your fans, like, the show is dirt, the show is crappy. Wow! Well, thank you. Um, well, I mean, you cut off the show halfway through my interview. I mean, this is going to be something I'm going to talk about for a long time. Like, you can't silence me, and nobody can. Nobody can, all right? Boy. I'm going to talk my shit. I'm going to say what I have to say every single day. <laughs> was there anybody else besides Frank that's in your way that you're going to go after? Or is, is there like somebody else? Like, I mean, uh, you know what? You uh, get me like a written a list of your husbands and I'll just take each one of them out too. I don't know. Really? I'm feeling generous. I feel like hurting you especially today. Oh, well, shit. So I guess that's the way to end the episode. <laughs> oh, my God. So this and everything else that's coming to you. Oh my god, I need to save all my husbands. Like I need to end the the, the episode. So jeez. Anyway, um thank you and good luck on February twenty second. Luck for losers. Wish your luck to Frank. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. It was your pleasure. Yes, pleasure was mine. So thank you guys. Go give them a follow. Make sure you're following IWA. Uh, February 22nd, guys. Uh, if you're in the New Jersey area, I would uh, definitely stop on by. So I, I want to say one more thing. Okay. I want to miss one thing. For the show, February 22nd, there will be blood. No oh boy. And it's going to get intense. Oof. I'm scared. Anyway, guys, thank you for another episode of Under the Ropes. Thank you, NXCN. <laughs> I'll bring strawberries, I promise. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>